If you're improving rapidly as a musician, day in, day out, regardless of what life throws at you, then you might not need this video. But if you run into problems from time to time, then a power practice routine might be exactly what you need to help you get through those rough points. In this video, I'm going to show you how exactly what a power practice routine is and how it can help with this. Make sure you stay until the end because I'm going to tell you the most common mistakes that you'll need to avoid when putting a power practice routine together. Now, the term power practice is one that I actually got from Mike Walker, who is an amazing jazz guitarist, teacher, composer, all that. And I'm happy to say also a friend and a mentor. And it refers to having a much shorter practice routine than your normal one that you can use on days when things are tough, you're strapped for time or energy or focus, or things are just broken up into lots of little pieces rather than you having one really big block where you can do your normal practice. And the aim around this is a couple of things. The first is it means that you don't just give up practicing on days when things aren't easy. You don't just break that momentum you've got up of consistent practice when things get tough and you might otherwise be tempted or not quite sure what to do you've still got something that you can put in there and even more than that it's not a decision that you have to make you're not suddenly thinking oh i've hardly got any time today i know i want to do some practice how do i do that because you've already done the thinking in advance as soon as you see okay i can't do my normal thing here you already know what you're going to fit into the gap. So that's really helpful, both in helping you make best use of that time rather than having to try and work it out on the day itself. But also, again, you're much likely to actually do the practice when you have a clear idea what to do in advance. You'd be amazed how many times just having to make a decision about what you do is enough to stop you from doing the practice in the first place. And it won't feel like that to you. You feel like there are other reasons. You'll make other excuses for you, but that tiny bit of extra effort can actually be really discouraging. And the final thing that's really helpful about having a dedicated power practice routine is that it stops you feeling guilty for doing less because when you've got less time to practice, sometimes it's really easy to get into the feeling of thinking, well, there's no point doing it because I can't do my full routine. Or you do some stuff, but you think, oh, well, I should have done more. But with a carefully thought out power practice routine, you have decided in advance, this is what I'm doing on days when I have less time, and I'm happy with it. This counts as a good result on a difficult day. So you can go in, you can do the practice as set out in your power practice routine and not feel guilty about anything, which is, again, much more likely that you'll start it in the first place. If we've got this nagging feeling that we're going to feel guilty for not doing enough when we finish, that's a big trigger for us just to not do it in the first place. And also, over time, when you come back, the next day, hopefully, and you can do your normal practice again, you're feeling good about what you did the day before. And that's going to carry over and help the new day's practice. Whereas if you've kind of worked out something on the fly and you're not really feeling great about it, you're feeling a bit guilty, that can leak over into the next day. So how do you actually go about creating this power practice routine? And the trick is to start from what you're already doing. You don't want to give yourself the task of creating something completely new and bespoke for this particular circumstance. That's a whole lot of effort that's probably not very useful. So start with what you would normally do and just cut it down to a much smaller bit. And there is no exact formula for this, but I think a good rule of thumb is about a quarter of the length of what you would normally do. So if you normally do two hours practice a day, you're looking at a power practice routine that's about half an hour. If you normally do 20 minutes practice a day, you're looking at a power practice routine that's about five minutes. And the ways you can do this are by either you know, reducing the length of all the things that you normally fit into a full practice routine, or you could just cut some of them out completely. And I would tend to lean more towards cutting things out rather than just trying to keep everything in there and shorten it. 
And a couple of the ways that I would look at this is I would tend to prioritize things that are very concrete and things that you already know how to do where you're refining them or you're maintaining things. So something like technique, I would prioritize those over learning new things and very creative stuff where you tend to want to have um, a feel that you've you've got time to, to get into this. That doesn't for me gel so well with the feeling that I've, I've got a restricted time routine. And the other thing that is really helpful is things that can be broken down into smaller chunks rather than stuff that is one big whole mass. Because again, the whole point of this routine is that you can fit it in on difficult days, which might mean you've just got one smaller bit of time. It might mean, however, that you've got little blocks of time everywhere. So having something you can break up helps with that. It might mean that you're struggling for motivation and you just haven't got the motivation to do your whole big practice. So again, the smaller blocks you can break things in into, the easier it is to fit them into little slots or to feel, oh yeah, I can, I can have a go at that when your motivation is low. It feels much easier to start something relatively small and concrete and doable than something large and open-ended and creative sometimes. So let's create a fictional example of what this might look like. Let's say I practice four things every day. I'm gonna practice technique. I'm gonna practice harmony, playing chords, comping, that sort of thing. I am going to practice rhythm and I am going to practice new repertoire, uh, getting familiar with new tunes. Let's say those are the four blocks that I do each day. It doesn't really matter how long I do them for, but in this case, let's say I do half an hour on each a day. How would I cut that down and turn that into half an hour long power practice routine? Well, like I've suggested, I'm not just gonna shrink all of them down to a shorter time. I'm gonna actually choose to get rid of some of them. So the technique, that's probably one that I'm going to stick with. That is maintenance of my skill on my instrument. And I'm gonna to want to keep that up. And again, I might go for rhythm as another one. Let's, let's say I'm not gonna worry about the, the comping, the harmony, and I'm not going to worry about <clears throat> the, you know, the learning new tunes. That's more in the creative space. That's something that I want to do when I've got more time. So I've got two things there. I've got hopefully some rhythmic exercises I'm working on that can be very concrete. So that's easy for me to say, right, short period of time. I know exactly what I'm doing. Let's do it. And the technique, again, very concrete. Here's, here's what I'm working on. Let's do that. So that might be one way that I do it. Rather than half an hour on four things, I might cut it down to two things, 15 minutes each. Or even I might well choose to look at, well, let's say Maybe I'm just gonna do the technique thing. And because I had half an hour of that to start with, I'm aiming for half an hour at the end. I'm just gonna do my half an hour technique because that, that fits quite well. That's, that's maintenance practice of what I'm already doing on the instrument. It's very specific, it's very concrete. And those, those would be two ways that I might take, say a two hour practice routine, turn it into half an hour, but you can apply that to any lengths. The two hour bit is not important. It's more the concept of how might I go from four blocks of things that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis and cut it down to a smaller one that I already know that's what I'm going to do on days when I have less time. Now, I promised you that I would share some common mistakes that I see people make when they try and create practice routines so that you can avoid them. And I've got three ones for you. And the first one is not cutting things down enough. We really, really want generally as musicians to say, yeah, I'm doing huge amounts of practice. I feel really satisfied because I spent lots of time practicing and that's great, but this can be a real pitfall in this case. If you try and keep too much of what you would normally do in there, whether it's too many aspects of it, whether it's just keeping it too long, you know, maybe, maybe you say, actually, I'm only gonna cut a quarter of what I normally do. So I'm now, my power practice routine is three quarters of the, the normal length okay, that's a little bit shorter, but it's not short enough that you are pretty much guaranteed you can fit it in on a difficult day. Much, much more effective to, to be brutal with this. Say, actually, yes, I am gonna cut it down a lot. And remember, if you find yourself with more time than you thought, and you've got a really short power practice routine, you can always choose to go on longer. But if your idea of a short power practice is too long, then either you won't fit it in, or on those days when you're demotivated, 
you're just not going to feel like doing something that challenging. So don't fall into the trap of keeping your power practice too long. It really does want to be a short version. And the second thing is not being, second mistake is not being specific about enough about exactly what you're practicing. So it doesn't want to be just, oh, I'm going to practice scales for 10 minutes. That's very vague. What exactly are you doing? Which scales are you practicing? How are you practicing them? Length of time on, on each of those things. And that, yes, that applies to practice in general. I think that's a really good way to go about it. But even more so when you are strapped for time and you're looking to fit some valuable things into a short bit of time really helps to be very clear and specific about what you're doing. And again, just as much for the likelihood that you will do it. When you've got five minutes sitting there and you know exactly what you're going to practice, you can make use of those five minutes. If you're thinking a vague idea, it becomes much harder to do something useful in those five minutes. So, so that's the second thing. Be really specific about exactly what is in this. And the third thing, the third big mistake I see people making is waiting to get it perfect. So you've got this idea, I want to create a much smaller, shorter version of my practice routine as a power practice, and you can get really caught up in what is the perfect choice to make. Is it better if I do 10 minutes of topic X and 12 minutes of topic Y, or the other way around, 10 and 12, 12 and 10? which exact exercises should I include in there? All those sorts of things. And that really does not matter that much. The most important thing is that you pick something that is useful, something that is going to have an impact and you do it. So don't spend forever trying to find the perfect power practice routine. Find something that is good enough and have it there ready to go next time you have a day when you need it. And if you like, over time, you can refine it, you can make it better, but do not hold off getting it ready to go by trying to get it perfect right out the gate. To get even more from this, check out my video on three tips to plan your practice for better results next. And if you'd like the special practice and performance tips that I only share with subscribers, then head on over to playinthezone.com and sign up for the emails. They're free. I've been Mark Morley-Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. And I'll see you in the next video.